What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build this really simple floor standing LED lamp. This project is the first in a series of projects I'm doing with Lowe's, who are the sponsor of this week's video. And all of these projects are gonna be really simple, very accessible, limited tools DIY build. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I needed to do on this project was lay out the basic shape for the base of the lamp onto some scrap three quarter inch plywood. In retrospect, I probably should have used MDF instead, since it would have looked a lot better after painting, but this was what I had on hand. This design is based on an Instructables post by Open Design Club, and I'll have a link to it in the video description below, and they have measurements in that post, although you will need to adjust them based on the exact light you end up with. After laying out the design, I cut it out using my jigsaw, and I just made sure to take my time and really try to stay right on my lines, as that would mean I'd just have a lot less sanding to do later. With the right blade, you can get a really nice finish using a jigsaw, and I used a higher tooth count blade meant for cutting wood. Once the first piece was cut, I could trace it onto the remaining plywood and cut out the second layer, and this time, instead of trying to stay right on the line, I stayed slightly proud of the line so I could sand this second layer flush with the first layer later. Next, I could glue the base pieces together. First, I attached the two layers using glue and brad nails, and then attached these little feet that I cut off camera. And these allow the wiring to run under the bottom of the base. Also, I made sure not to add any nails towards the center of the base, as I knew I'd need to drill holes there later, so I added a clamp there just for good measure. After the base dried, I traced the shape of the center portion of the base onto a small scrap and cut it off camera. And this piece will serve as the top of the lamp, which will connect the three LED lights and just give them more stability. With all the pieces cut, I could start shaping them and getting them ready for paint. First, I removed the bulk of the extra material over at the oscillating belt sander. And this tool is incredibly useful for projects like this as that large flat surface allows you to get really nice straight edges. I also checked the ends of the base for square along the way, making sure they didn't end up skewed. After shaping the belt sander, I continued to refine the pieces with the random orbit sander, which can get into those areas the belt sander really can't reach. I also broke all the edges and rounded the corners while I was at it. And you can see the finished top piece here as well and see how the shape kind of mirrors the base, only smaller. With the pieces finished sanded, I went ahead and applied a few coats of white spray paint and let it dry overnight. The next day, I could start working on getting the LED lights mounted to the base and top. The first thing I needed to do was cut this raised logo off of the end of the light so that it would sit flush on the base, and a utility knife made quick work of this. Next, I started thinking about cable management and first thought some electrical tape running down the back of the lights would work, but I ended up abandoning this idea later as it just didn't look very good on the final lamp. I needed to drill a through hole for the cords to pass through in the center of the base, so I measured to find the center, then drilled the hole using a Forstner bit. I made sure to flip the base over just before the bit passed all the way through, so I'd end up with a cleaner hole. Next, I marked locations for the machine screws I used to mount the lights, and these lights are meant to be hung with a chain and have a small bracket with a hole in it on each end, and this ended up being the perfect way to mount the lights. I drilled the hole and then countersunk it to get rid of that tear out. Next, I counterbored those holes on the underside of the base so that the machine screws and nuts would be hidden inside the underside of the base and I drilled these holes with a half inch Forstner bit. To give the lights a little bit more stability, I decided to recess the ends of the lights into the base. First, I traced around the end of the light and then drilled out most of the recess with a Forstner bit, and then I used a chisel to clean out the rest of the recess. After cutting the recess for the other two lights, I test fit the light with the inch and a half long machine screws and it fit great. Next, I transferred the hole locations to the top piece using an awl and then pre-drilled the holes. I also needed to drill another recess for the on-off switch, which is located on that end of the light, which I drilled with a Forstner bit. To attach the lights to the top, I used some 3 quarter inch long screws, as I didn't want the machine screws like I used on the base sticking through the top. I also made sure the lights were switched to the on position before attaching them to the top. All right, while I finish attaching the LED lights to the top of the lamp, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Lowe's Home Improvement, and the tool of the week, this 81-piece mechanics tool set from Craftsman. A good set of sockets and ratchets is an essential part of any workshop, and this Craftsman set is a great place to start if you're looking for an all-in-one set. It comes with both standard and metric sockets, a quarter-inch and three-eighths inch ratchet, extension bars, lots of other adapters, and pretty much everything you're gonna need to get up and running in the world of sockets and ratchets. Some of the features of this tool set are the gunmetal chrome coating, 
coating. This is going to wear really well. It's corrosion resistant and it looks really nice. Also, one of my favorite things about this set is the 120 point ratchets. This is going to allow you to tighten down your nuts or bolts in very, very tight spaces because you barely have to turn those ratchets to get it to engage. And last, one of the best things about this set and the best thing about Craftsman in general is this full lifetime warranty on this set. If you ever have any problems with a set, you can get in touch with Craftsman and they'll get you squared away. If you want to learn more about this tool set, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to Lowe's for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back to the project. I flipped the light over and then placed the other ends of the lights into the recesses. I turned the light onto its side and used a socket and ratchet from that Craftsman Mechanics tool set to attach the nuts. And this was pretty tricky as the machine screws only protruded about a quarter of an inch into the recess, but using a screwdriver to push the nut towards the machine screw through the socket did the trick. Before attaching the lights to the base, I removed the manufacturer stickers just to give the lamp a cleaner look, and it left behind some sticky residue. I removed the residue with a shop towel on acetone, although I think some goo gone might have worked better here. Next, I needed to deal with the three cords dangling in the center of the lamp, and I've seen a lot of really cool macrame designs incorporated into pieces lately, and I figured braiding the cords might be a cool look, so I just used a standard hair braid that I think everyone knows how to do from summer camp when they were a kid, and I think it turned out pretty cool. I passed all three cords through the hole after braiding, and then used some zip ties to create a little wiring harness, a tip I picked up from one of my favorite shows, Roadkill Garage, and this just keeps the cords from unraveling. To attach them to the underside of the base, I used some half inch staples. I plugged all three of these cords into a three plug extension cord and the electrical was pretty much done. Now I realize there are certainly ways to wire these three cords together into one cord, but I frankly don't feel comfortable showing more complex electrical work here, so you can do your own research if you want to go that route. Finally, I added some rubber feet to keep the lamp from sliding around and then I could test it out and I was pretty impressed with how bright this thing is and how cool and interesting it looks once it's lit up. To control the light, I decided to use this Iris Wi-Fi smart switch from Lowe's, which is ideal for me because you can control it with Amazon Alexa, which I already have implemented in my home. You also don't need an Iris hub for this switch, so it's basically just plug and play. So I plugged the lamp and switch into my wall, used the Iris app to add it to my home Wi-Fi network, named the switch floor lamp, added the Iris skill to my Alexa, and I was done. Now I can control the light either with my Iris app or using my Alexa dot. Alexa, turn on the floor lamp. And with that, this lamp project was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this more limited tools build. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting this based on the comments you've left and also based on some of the complaints about the regular tools I use. And really it was nice to build something a little bit simpler, get more back to basics and really back to how I started doing all this. And I think it's really nice to be able to build a project that most of you should be able to complete. This was a really basic limited tool project and any of these tools would be tools you'd use on pretty much every woodworking project from here on out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you do want to build this for yourself, I will have a list of all the tools and materials I use on this project in the video description below, all of which are available at Lowe's. Also, if it's your first time here, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every Wednesday, so stay tuned for more of those. And last, I have enabled that YouTube membership. It was a sponsor, but now it's membership functionality on the channel that allows you to support me monthly. I've got lots more kind of behind the scenes content coming out here soon. I'm going to be doing these monthly Q&A videos where you guys can ask me any questions and I will answer them directly and those are only available to my patrons and YouTube members. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and until next week, happy building.